is in love. If there is in love, and we're celebrating that because God is love. Don't, don't leave. Don't go too far. You got to sing again. <laughs> I, I, I got to hear another song. Are you, are you you're okay with that, right? <laughs> But before they do, I am excited to introduce this man of God uh, to you on tonight. He's a pastor, he's a husband, a father, prolific, profound, extraordinary preacher. Uh, I've been listening to him since I was a little boy, and he didn't even realize how he was influencing a little country boy from Arkansas at the time. Uh, but I know that you're going to be blessed by his heart and the words that he'll share with us on tonight. Can you help me welcome Pastor Jeffrey Johnson, the pastor of the Eastern Star Church in Indianapolis, Indiana? Come on, put your hands together for him. Thank you for being here. Well, thanks for having me. I'm honored to be here uh, with the great one. No, 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 no. I'm so glad that you took the time to join us because you got some big things happening. We'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, but thank you for being a part of, of this ministry moment tonight. It's been powerful, and we 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 just save the best for uh, last. <laughs> no comment. But I'm glad to be here, though. Uh, I knew he, I knew he would have that response. <laughs> Um, what do you do? You know, there's a lot going on in the world. You've seen a lot of change. Your church has been cutting edge for many years. Um, again, I used to get your VHS tape ministry, and this was before everybody had progressed in that particular area. You were cutting edge then, and you're still cutting edge now. People come to study your church. How do you remain relevant in what's happening in the world right now? Yeah, one of the things, first of all, we just give honor and praise and glory to God. It's, it's the power of God's Holy Spirit using us. It's God's grace opening the doors and making it happen. But we just, uh, at our church, we just try to meet needs. And we believe if you meet people's needs, then they're going to come and be a recipient of what God has for them. So we meet spiritual needs and financial needs and domestic needs and needs of children, senior saints, and everything else um, so that we can be relevant in this day and make sure people have a relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. So what are some of the things or some of the ways, rather, that you help to meet those needs? Because, of course, uh, I... I don't know a church that doesn't really want to meet needs, but some of them don't know how. Yeah, one of the things my mentor, Dr. A. Lewis Patterson, used to talk about is what love is. Love is evaluating needs and then doing what is necessary to meet the need mm. in a spirit of self-sacrifice even when you don't feel like doing it. Wow. So part of love is evaluation of need. What is happening today? What is going on? Uh, what's happening in the days and the times in which we live? And then gear the ministry towards that because when it comes to ministry, our message does not change. It is Jesus Christ, salvation in his name, mm -hmm. and helping people to understand you can get right with God by putting your faith in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so that doesn't change. The mission doesn't change. It is evangelism. It is discipleship. It's winning souls. It's developing those souls once they have been won. But what changes are the methods in which you get that done. Mm. And so a lot of times uh, we're using 20th century methods to to reach a 21st century people. Wow. And uh, so we just try to just uh, stay uh, alert, awake, and aware of what's happening with people so that we can come alongside and be a blessing to them. Well, we're glad. I, I'm, I'm grateful that uh, that you have that kingdom focus, that you're, you're willing to step out uh, of tradition and uh, step out of yesterday and really embrace tomorrow. I, uh, it, it's evident in your ministry. It's evident in the church. And one of the things that you've done in order to meet those needs is you started a series of books that are dialogues with. And your newest one, I think, is Dialogues with Single Parents. Right. Talk about that for a moment. Yeah, God laid on my heart to um, start putting some things in print. And, um, and so I wrote Dialogue with... Uh, my daughters, mm -hmm. and what's so interesting, uh, Pastor, is I don't have any biological daughters, but I have a lot of spiritual daughters. Mm. And, uh, and a lot of our young girls were going through things and that their fathers needed to address in their life, and a lot of them didn't have fathers in their lives. Mm. So I, I wrote the book speaking to girls as though I were their father, speaking to young women as though I were their father. These are the conversations your father should have had. Mm. And then I did, of course, dialogue with my sons. I have four biological sons with my wife. My wife and I have been married for 29 years. And, praise God. Uh, four, praise the Lord. <laughs> and four sons. 
and all of my sons are doing well. And so we took those principles and put them in a book, but I write it as though I'm speaking to boys and young men. Here are the things you need to know from the Word of God so that you can go from boyhood to manhood and live your life in a way that God gets the glory. And so the, the latest book that I've written in that series is Dialogue with Single Parents. Um, in the United States, 60% of babies being born in our country are born to single parents. Wow. 80% wow. of babies born wow. to those of us of color uh, are born to single parents. And a wow. lot of times... Uh, our country has condemned single parents. Mm. And what's so bad about that is when people need somebody to come alongside and strengthen them, what they've been receiving is condemnation. Mm. And it really hurts my heart because we jump on the parent that stayed. Wow. And then we wow. ignore the one that left. Wow. And then the one that stayed, that's working hard, that has to take on dual roles and dual responsibilities in that home. And so I, I wrote this book to single parents to let you know God loves you. God has so much in store for you. You can still get to the destiny that God has prearranged. And, um, and, and, and all around this country, people have been blessed by, by that book, Dialogue with Single Parents. Well, I had the pleasure of, of having you come and preach at my church, and uh, I got the book. <laughs> I, got, I got several of the books. And if you have not, wherever you are around the world, if you have not uh, read those books and or if you're in one of those situations, you're a son, you're a daughter, and you really would like to hear extraordinary God-given wisdom on how to encourage your, your life, the people around you, because it's generational. Yeah. It's, and here's the thing. A lot of times when we talk about single parents, we think single parents are some 14, 15-year-old, 16-year-old girl who has these serial illicit sexual affairs. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. Most single parents living in our country are 40 years old plus. Mm -hmm. And most don't have three, four, and five children. Most have one child. Mm -hmm. It's these myths that has caused us to miss out on the message of God on what people need in this time. And everybody is not a single parent because of some sin. Mm. Most, of the, most of these single parents started in loving, caring relationships. Mm. The issue is that in the United States, almost 50% of marriages end in divorce. Right. So you marry somebody, right. you love them, you think you're going to be together for forever, something goes down and it doesn't happen, now you're a single parent. Mm. Then you have grandparents that take in their grandchildren, right. Right. you have foster parents, uh, you have people, just neighbors, here's a child in the neighborhood, I'm going to take this child in because mm. the parents don't know what to do, how to do, and when to do it with them. Mm -hmm. So you have widows and, and widowers. And so you don't know how somebody became a single parent. Mm -hmm. What they need are people of faith, mm -hmm. people who love Jesus, who yeah. love God, yeah. to say, you know what? You don't have to be down. God can lift you up again. That's good. And I, I'm proof. Oh, that's good. In my own life, and my mother uh, wrote the, uh, the introduction for me. Oh, wow. My mother, uh, at the age of 30, was a single parent with four children. My God. Of which I was the youngest. My but God. my mother still got us in the church. Got us, all four of us are, are saved. We're all Christians. I was able to get a college degree. I was able to go to graduate school. I've been married to the same woman for 29 years. Mm. I'm in my children's Praise life. God. So just because you out of a broken situation doesn't mean you have to stay broken. That's good. That's that God good. can put you back together again. And, and so that's what I'm trying to get across in the book, Dialogue with Single Parents. My mother had four children and still went back and got a nursing degree, mm. became an RN, and took care of her children wow. and didn't have a bunch of men running in and out of our home and all of that. Wow. And was a committed Christian and raised her children, but it wasn't by herself. Our church was a part of that. Mm. Our family was a part of that. And we have to get back to where we stop condemning sin single parents and start comforting single parents. That's good. Stop putting them down and start lifting them up. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, and, and I think not just even in single parenting, but in every area. You know, whatever we're dealing with, whatever woes or ailments, we, you know, the well don't need a physician, the sick do. Yes. And so I think that your book is incredible at addressing that and giving that wisdom. And some people, what I've noticed, and you tell me if you agree, some people don't even recognize that they missed something because they've never been exposed to it. Yeah. That's what I was trying to talk about in, in my book, Dialogue with uh, My Sons and Dialogue with My Daughters. 
if your father has never been there, mm -hmm. who should have been telling you about God, mm -hmm. telling you about Jesus, mm -hmm. this is how a woman carries herself. This is how a young man acts when he's with a woman. Mm -hmm. and, and you've never heard it. Right. You don't even know this thing is missing. It's like somebody that doesn't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then they meet Jesus and go, man, I should have had Jesus a long time ago. <laughs> and don't know what they're missing out on. Yeah. And so uh, God just laid it on my heart. And I, I just have a love for people. And I want them to understand what God has designed for you and desire for you. And once you start opening up to what the power of God's Holy Spirit can do, you don't know what God's going to do in that situation. So, so as you can see, you need to get that book. <laughs> it, it, because if, even if they're not in that situation, the thing I love about your books and, and what you're doing, uh, we know someone who is. And so we need that wisdom. Yeah, here, on our, on here's our the thing, steps. Pastor. Somebody said, well, I don't need that book because I'm not a single parent. But your cousin's a single parent. Right. Your child is a single right. parent. Your children go to school with their best friends. They are, their mothers and fathers are single parents. Mm -hmm. And so we, they're in our churches. They work on our jobs. They're part of our community. And we don't know anything about them. Mm -hmm. And we a lot of mm -hmm. times taking things for granted because we're in a two-parent household, because my wife and I have stayed together for so long. I can't ignore somebody that's trying to play the role of a father and a mother. And it's hard enough mm -hmm. with two of us that love each other. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> what it is in a household yeah. that a mother mother's not there or father's not there or a mother and father's there and they go at it every day yeah. and what these people need in their lives and it's time for us to wake up to what God has spoken in his word and so I just pull principles out of the word of God and here is what God is saying and throughout scripture we see single parents that God came alongside and was a blessing in their life and we need to follow in that pattern that God that Jesus has already established. Well I applaud it. Can we just celebrate that he is operating in ministry in this particular way. And, and, and you can't deny the reality that what you're doing is outreach. You are reaching out for people that are lost, and that's what your church has been about. Those, you, that's one of the pillars of your success, I, I, if we can call it that. But it's just favor. It's God's favor on your ministry. It's because you have an awesome outreach. Talk about the outreach effort that you're embarking on. I know about it, but they need to know about it. Well, several things are going on. One, we don't ignore the ills of society. We don't come to church and, and have an hour and 20 minutes of escapism mm -hmm. and act like nothing is going on in our world. Yeah. So we know people are hungry. We know people are hurting. We know families are breaking down. Mm -hmm. We know people are homeless. And so in those areas, we come alongside and try to do something. Uh, I, I guess in the next few days, I'm heading to uh, Haiti. Yes. Uh, our, our church has sponsored uh, children, Christian. Christian churches and Christian schools over there mm. where we feed millions and millions of meals to children. Wow. And what we take for wow. granted to eat whenever we get finished. As soon as I get finished talking to you, I'm going to get something to eat. <laughs> and we just take that for granted. And a lot of times, I mean, they'll go, they'll go a day or two or a week with no food. And so our church has been able to come alongside and do that. And God opened the door. Now I'm going to minister to uh, pastors and preachers in, in seminary mm. so that they can know how to go back to their churches. Here's how you do it. Wow. Here's how you're able to meet the needs. And then not only to preach to them and teach to them, but to provide a way so that we can get food to you. We can get curriculum for your children to you. We can get clothes to you so that you can, you can be a blessing to your community. It's one thing to preach and teach the gospel. It's mm -hmm. another thing that when you finish preaching and teaching, to go out and live that gospel. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Amen. Amen. Well, you, you have an awesome word, you have an awesome ministry, you have an awesome anointing. Uh, what has God placed on your heart? We only have a few more minutes, but I, I just want to give you that time to speak into the lives of the people around the world that will be watching tonight. Well, one of the things, uh, one of the things I want to make clear is that God has not forgotten you. There's a single parent named Hagar in the book of Genesis, and her child's father first was in their life and providing for them and supporting them, and then, for whatever reason, he decided, I'm not taking care of my son, and I'm not taking care of my son's mother. Mm. And when that happened, even though that father forgot about his son and that, that man walked out, God didn't walk out. God stepped in and God was able to provide for Hagar and her son Ishmael and she was in tears and crying thinking I don't know how I'm going to take care of this boy by myself. One of the things I know is when other people step out, that's when God steps in. And 
And when God steps in, he's able to work wonders in your life. And God yeah. can make a way out of no way. Yeah, to God be the glory. I, I don't know about you, but I'm glad God stepped in. Hallelujah. I wouldn't be here if he had not stepped Hallelujah. in. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for sharing your heart, sharing your ministry, and for these books, these extraordinary books that have been anointed and ordained by God to help so many people in various areas of their lives. Mm -hmm. And thank you for tackling an area that seems to go, for, seems to be forgotten. A lot of times, you know, we, we're oblivious to what the plight of these single parents are. So for you to do that is extraordinary. And we celebrate you and we thank you. Praise and we Lord. thank God for Pastor Jeffrey Johnson tonight. Thank you, man, for being here Praise tonight. Listen, wherever you're watching around the world, please understand that this, this has not been just uh, a regular TV and praise the Lord, but this has been a ministry movement. God has spoken to your life. He has encouraged you. You happened by this channel, and it's not by happenstance. It's because God ordered your steps and ordered you in this process of turning and watching us tonight. So we want to thank you for staying. But we know we can't take credit for any of this. It's the Lord's doing. And it is his word that has captivated your attention, that has literally arrested your heart. God's word that has been speaking to you, ministering to you, telling you that salvation is yours, that redemption is yours, that forgiveness is yours. And the power of God is working in your house, in your living room, Wherever you're watching this, God is moving on your behalf even now. And extraordinary things are about to take place, but they'll only take place if you yield and give him a yes. You've been looking for the answer? I got the answer. His name is Jesus. And this word can change your entire life. Yes. Not only, not only does it change life, but this is the thing that I love about God. It changes eternity. Thanks be to God that through Jesus Christ, if you'll receive him tonight, if you'll literally embrace him tonight, all of the word, all of the phenomenal messages that you've heard tonight, if you receive Jesus Christ, then those messages matter for you. Because God is waiting. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. You've been waiting on God. But what you didn't know is God's been standing there the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's been waiting on you. Tonight is the night. Just give him your yes. Give him your yes. There's some people that will pray for you. There's some people that literally will connect with you in ministry. And we want you to connect to this ministry at TBN. Call the number at the bottom of the screen. I know that you, you have purpose and there's power in your purpose. When you connect with God and then connect with us, we promise that we're going to pray you to that place of God's purpose for your life. Can you just close us out and just pray? So just, just pray for the people that may be in that position that need that on tonight. Well, first, I just want you to know that God hears us and he answers our prayer. If you can believe it, then God can make it happen. Yes. Father, thank you for just how awesome you are. Thank you for your love towards us. Thank you for how you care and watch over us. Thank you that you've never forgotten about us. Now I lift up your sons and daughters to you, dear God, and I pray that you'll meet every need and open every door. And those that have never invited you into their life, I pray that now they'll confess the hope in Christ Jesus and receive the salvation and the power that you have for them. And I believe victory in their lives now. Now, yes. in Jesus name amen and it is so and it is so well here to close us out we're going to have a great time this is my dad's dr. W R Norfolk I love you daddy this